Good evening, everyone. You're welcome. Um, this is Chi Jams. So today, I welcome you all to Chi Jams Academy special crypto webinar. I hope you've had a, a great day. If you can hear me, please type on the chat box. I can hear you. All right. If you can hear me clearly, type on the chat box. I can hear you. I'm trying to check my mic if um, it's optimum and then we can move from there. Please type on the chat box. I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, all right, all right, beautiful, beautiful. So today um, we're here to think, talk about the five different ways you can make millions. Um, okay, someone is saying, so, all right, all right. So today we want to talk about five different ways you can make money using the cryptocurrency space, right? Um, so I want to start by telling people something. Um, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Whether the central bank bans it, central bank of Nigeria bans it, or whether the central bank of India bans it, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Cryptocurrency is the value that is attached to the blockchain. All right, people have people do not understand the difference between blockchain and cryptocurrencies, right? People do not understand the difference between blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and this is what I am here today to demystify. All right. So, first of all, I want to teach you guys before I before I start telling you the five different ways you're gonna make money on blockchain on cryptocurrency. I want to show you what exactly is blockchain because a whole lot of people have issues understanding um, cryptocurrency. They think cryptocurrency is just buying and selling and stuff like that, right? But that's not what cryptocurrency is. So right now I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you what exactly is blockchain and what exactly it does. And then finally, I'm going to show you what cryptocurrency is. And then I'll teach you how you are going to make money with cryptocurrencies. If you, if you are ready to go, please type, let's go on the chat box. Let's go. Are you guys, are you guys? Oh, wow, 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 wow. So the first things first, introduction to blockchain. The blockchain, as I said here, is, is, is a growing list of records. So basically, when the idea of blockchain was brought about by Satoshi Nakamoto, he had this idea of bringing a kind of recording system that can never be corrected. Now, I, I use this example to explain. I think, I hope you are writing down what is on your screen right now because it is very important for you, right? So when he, when he brought it out, he said, um, he looked at the banking system, for instance. If you go to the bank, how many of you go to the bank to go and pay in money? There is this big book that's always there in the bank that people come and they fill in the details, right? I, I went to the bank yesterday, so I, I remember clearly what I feel. I, I went to change my ATM, so I filled in my name, my card details, and, and you know, dates and rest of them, right? That is what is called a ledger, okay? Now, Imagine, for instance, you go to pay in money to someone's account, and then you fill your details in that ledger, and, and then uh, the person tells you, I did not see the money, all right? Um, guys, please stop annotating on the screen. Stop annotating on the screen. I won't take it lightly with you. I'll just kick you out of the meeting, all right? Okay, cool. So, as I was saying, the person tells you, I cannot see the money, and then you go back to the bank to go and you know, confirm your transactions, and then they tell you that the page which you wrote your details was mistakenly turned off by somebody else, right? That means that there is no other place that transaction can be found. I, I, I thank God that right now banks are beginning to wise up. They now have receipts and the rest of them. But that is what the, what was available as of 2018, 2006, 2007, 2009, when blockchain came about. So, so don't you talk about thought about a way where he can, you know, help people store information on using cryptography and those information can never be lost. What did he do? He used a system called blockchain. Let me explain. 
in, in the blockchain, we have uh, what we call a distributed decentralized ledger system, whereby each information is held by different people. So imagine that, that particular ledger you have in the bank, that it's not just one. That once you fill your details in that ledger, right, you go home with a copy of the entire ledger, right? The next person comes in and fills in their details and they still go home with another copy of the entire ledger. That means that if someone wants to come and put in a transaction that does not that, that is not true, right? It will not tally with the other transactions. I'm going to explain this as we go. So um, what you have to understand right now is that the blockchain is immutable. You cannot alter an information that is already put on the blockchain, all right? If you understood that, please type, let's go. Okay. Wow, wow. Now, there are different types of blockchain, right? We have the public blockchain, which is available everywhere, the Bitcoin blockchain, the public blockchain. Um, okay, I think it's time to start kicking people out of this meeting. All right, so um, anyone that annotates on the screen, I'll kick you out, right? That's what I'm gonna do right now. So we have the public blockchain, right? Um, let me clear this, sorry about that. We have the public blockchain, which is the type of blockchain that does not require permission. Everyone has access to the public blockchain, right? No, no permission, you can access it anywhere, anytime you are, right? Examples of the public blockchain is Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain has what we call an explorer. I can take the um, I can take the public address. I'm going to teach you guys what public address means uh, in this training. In this training, yeah, you can. I can take the public address of my friend and go to the uh, um, and go to the blockchain explorer and search for this address and find out exactly the full details, what he has, you know, everything about that particular uh, wallet address. That's why it's called public. It is permissionless. I don't need to take permission to access it, right? And these kinds of blockchain, I didn't tell you guys before now, the applications of blockchain is vast. I used the banking system to make us an explanation when I started, but the, bank, the blockchain technology can be used anywhere and everywhere. And I'm gonna explain that as we go on this training, all right? So the first thing I said here is that public blockchain is permissionless. It can be used in several sectors, including, including agriculture, education, and health. For instance, let me give you an instance. Let's say um, um, you have, now, now this is not you, I'm giving an instance. Let's say somebody, the name of the person is Alice, right? Alice has a health condition, okay? And Alice um, has a, a private hospital where she frequently visits to run the checkup and test and, and so on and so forth. So that private hospital has Alice's medical records, all right? Now, normally in our world right now, Ba. If Alice tries to go to another hospital, she would have to buy a card in that other hospital and they will open a new file for her. But this is the solution that blockchain is going to bring to us, whereby her file is already stored on the blockchain. So when she goes from one hospital to another, all they need to do is to um all they need to do is to pull her file from the blockchain no matter the hospital she attends or wherever she uh, she goes to she will be able to receive they will be able to receive her full medical records all right that is application of blockchain in health in agriculture someone can use uh, the blockchain to store the details of all his crops or all his um, animals in the farm, whereby when an animal or, or, or a crop is being sold or processed, they can track its usage. You see, there, 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 are, there are several use, uh, use cases of the blockchain. I, I, I don't really need to waste time here. Let's move forward. Number two, private blockchain. Please, I need to, I need to make something clear. If you do not understand whatever I say, 
please ask the questions on the chat box immediately. So I wouldn't have to, you know, have an issue. So let, let, let me get this clear. If you understood what I explained in the public blockchain, please type on the chat box, I understand. If you did not understand, type, I don't understand. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I got people that understood, yeah, amazing. So we can move forward, yeah. Now, let me explain public blockchain. Sorry, private blockchain now. So private blockchain is, uh, okay, someone said, I don't understand the beginning. Um, just, just ask me a question so I can, ask, I can answer your question as we go on. So before that, let me explain private blockchain. Private blockchain is an invitation only, yeah. Is an invitation only blockchain. Let me explain. They require permission before you assess them. So, for instance, this is this is the blockchain that is used by companies and firms, right? Um, let me let me use bank for instance. So, if you go to the bank, right, you cannot assess. Um, some banking infrastructure, like the app that they use, the software that they use to um, talk to their clients. Am I correct? Can you guys hear me? Hello guys, can you hear me? All right, all right, beautiful. So I was saying that if you go to the bank, you can't assess um, the, the, the software that the bankers use to confirm transactions of their clients. The reasons being that you require a particular amount of training, right? Or you require a particular amount of, they call it clearance, to, um, to assess those softwares. That means they'll, they'll, they'll key you in as a bank staff, you know, you have some trainings to use them. You need permission. Even the bankers, before they assess those software, they have to put in their usernames, and passwords for the software to confirm that this person has permission to assess me, all right? So because the, the way the blockchain was created, right, it's, it looked like um, it is just a permissionless system, you know, everyone can do anything. So to suit the businesses of these large firms, banks, hedge funds, and the rest of them, they created the private blockchain. Okay, an example of, of private blockchain is the Hyperledger and the Ripple. Ripple right now is being used by most international banks for their transactions. It is a massive storage system that uses little or no data. So you see, the XRP coin you are trading on the crypto exchange, it has a, a company that is backing it up with a good use case. This is something people do not think about. I'm trying to make you understand that cryptocurrency is not just cryptocurrency because they are cryptocurrencies. They are cryptocurrencies because they are backed by blockchains that have use cases. Do you understand that? Please, if you understand, type I understand. If you don't understand, please type I don't understand. Oh, beautiful, you said very well, sir. All right, so Tochi Pell, you have a question. Um, I didn't get your question. You said, I don't understand from the beginning. Please ask me a question, all right? Ask me a question, ask me a question, ask me a question. If you don't understand anything, ask me a question, all right? Okay, so number three, hybrid or consortium blockchains. So hybrid blockchains are blockchains that um, possess characteristics of both public and private, right? So we can say they are semi-decentralized blockchains. Right. So example of semi-decentralized blockchains use cases are in the health sector, insurance sector, e-commerce, right? Whereby everyone can assess it, like Jumia, for instance, everyone can assess it. But for you to do certain transactions, you need to log in, right? So right now you can go to jumia.com, ponga.com, and you can, you know, search for whatever it is you want to search for without any restrictions, right? But once you want to buy, Right, once you are ready to check out, once you are ready to check out, you would need to log in, right? You need to put in some details. That's an example of semi um, 
and centralized blockchain. And we have several of them. We have uh, Voltron, we have um, um, VeChain, we have Bankchain and the rest of the Ego. Yeah. Someone said, he said cryptocurrencies are backed by blockchain and blockchain is backed by use cases. Yeah, that's the last part, use cases, right? So um, Touch is asking about my definition of blockchain. So let me just quickly run through it again. I said um, a blockchain is a decentralized ledger. So it's a decentralized list of records whereby um, it is locked using cryptography. Cryptography is a, um, a, a computer science term for encryption. In fact, in fact, let me tell you something. Cryptocurrencies, right? Why it is called cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies are actually digital currencies that are encrypted, right? Encryption means that they are locked. They are locked for a particular set of people, okay? So the word, the, the term crypto is deduced from encryption, okay? Meaning that you need two sets of keys to unlock a crypto, a crypto wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet, or a cryptocurrency account. The public key, which you make public, and um, the private key. Do you understand? Please, if you understood what I just said, please type, I understand. I understand, please. So I won't, I won't make a mistake and then we'll miss it out. Do you understand me? Okay. So now we've been able to explain what the blockchain is. We've talked about the three types of blockchain. There are other types of blockchain. But now I would want you to understand that there is different between types of blockchain and kinds of blockchain, right? Okay, beautiful. So let's talk about the characteristics of blockchain. Why blockchain is being talked about by the greatest people of all times. You see, this blockchain issue has become um, something that is, you know, publicized everywhere. What is what is it about the blockchain that is making everyone talk about? It? Number one is immutability. Blockchain cannot be copied. Bitcoin blockchain, okay, I, I, I wouldn't say copied, uh, it's imitable. Do you understand? Uh, okay, let me just, ah, my network is having issues. All right, so can you, can you guys hear me now? All right, beautiful. So I was saying number one is imitability. Blockchain cannot be changed. The Bitcoin blockchain remains the Bitcoin blockchain forever. Once you put in a detail, once there's a transaction that is made on the blockchain, it cannot be canceled. For instance, um, okay, we, we don't mind have these issues that someone sends money to you in the bank, right? And then you don't see it. And then tomorrow it rebounds to the person's wallet, to the person's account. Such kind of thing does not happen on the blockchain. Okay, the only thing you can see is a transaction that was canceled. But for a transaction to be rebounced, it does not happen. So immutability means unchanging over time or unable to be changed. The blockchain is immutable, it cannot change. You cannot start um, today and say, okay, the blockchain works like this today and tomorrow you say, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want it to work like this again. We want it to work this way. If you want it to work another way, you have to build another blockchain altogether. All right? Okay, that's number one. Number two is transparency. There is nothing hidden on the blockchain. Unless, of course, right now, that instead of um, having um, um, private blockchains, Okay, but the, the entire blockchain that we use in Africa, in Nigeria, and the rest of the world, right, is transparent. There is no hidden anything. In fact, nobody is, is collecting money from anybody to do anything. Everything is open for everybody to see on the blockchain. So there is no issue of I send money to you, I know it's when say, I know it's when say my money went. No, no, no. That, that does not happen. All right. That's transparency. Number three, security. Please, if you can hear me, type security. Security. Blockchain is 100% secured. 
security. It is totally secured, right? Now, it's secured in the sense that it cannot be hacked. The blockchain cannot be hacked. You, you must have had that some exchange. What? Ah, Mr. CJ, welcome, sir. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Sorry, please help me greet my boss. He's here. Good evening, sir. <laughs> wow, wow. Thank you for coming, sir. Good evening. So, um, as I was saying, security, the blockchain is secured. It cannot be hacked. You must have, you must have heard about several exchanges that was hacked, like Binance. What they were hacking was the front end, which is normal to every website. But the blockchain that is that is powering the the the, the the cryptocurrency cannot be hacked. Bitcoin blockchain has been running for over 12 years now, and not for one day have we heard that it was hacked. It cannot be hacked. Reason being that it is immutable. So because it is immutable, you cannot put something that is not there and it will work. Do you understand? So you cannot put something that is not there and expect it to work. That's why it is secured and unable to be hacked. Number four, fast and efficient. Let me give this example using fast and efficient. Um, um, so uh, one of my friends tried to send money down to me here in Nigeria using Western Union money transfer. Now, I think that was last year, October last year. Uh, when he sent the money, it took us two weeks to do all the things around there and then pay all, I, I think we paid, I think we paid um, 1,000, 3,000 something to clear the money, right? To come out to Naira and stuff like that. And then several different exchange rates and stuff like that, right? Two weeks to collect money from someone sent abroad. Guess what? That same friend, right? He sent money to me yesterday after I've trained him about cryptocurrency and stuff. He sent money using Tita, right? He sent money TRC USDT to me yesterday. And guess how many, how long it took that money to reflect in my wallet? Less than three seconds. So the, the issue of time wasting that we have in the current ecosystem of financial transactions have been solved totally on the blockchain. So I can stay here now and send money to 500 people in 500 different locations around the world in less than a minute. Yeah, it happens. So it is fast and efficient. Okay, that's number four. Then number five, they operate on peer-to-peer -peer network. Let me explain this. The, the normal human transactions, right? The reasons why human beings are having issues in this world. In fact, the number one problem every human being has is the problem of trust. If you can hear me, type trust. Then I'll explain. We're having the issue of trust. Trust. Let me explain. Now, whenever you meet somebody on the road, someone you don't know, right? And the person now comes and tells you, um, please, can I get 500 naira from you? You have the money, but you not give it to the person. Why? No, no, I think 500 naira is kind of soft. Some people have too much money. They'll give 500 naira. Someone just meets you and say, I, I need 20,000 naira from you. Will you give the money to the person? There and then. Without thinking about it, I, I need I need to answer this question on the chat box. <laughs> Felix said no. That's that's the, that's the issue. You don't trust the person. There is no other explanation to give to this scenario than being that you don't trust the person, right? Because you have not know. You would say because you don't know the person, right? But knowing people comes with trusting them. So if it was your friend, right? Your friend comes around and says, ah, I need, I, need to, I need 2K from you right now, right? You give the person because it's your friend. You trust him. That is why 
Um, someone is saying you cannot hear. Connect your audio. Connect your audio, and you'll be able to hear me. Now, the reason why that because of trust issues we have with ourselves, that is why the banking system exists today. So, middlemen, we call them middlemen. In every ecosystem, they are available. In 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 in, in the in the financial institution, they are called the banks. In the educational institutions, they are called the schools. Right. In in every endeavor of man. There are now what we call middlemen institutions. People who come out and say, okay, come. I will serve as your trust bank, right? I'll serve as your trust bank between transactions, on transactions between two people. So I can now call somebody on the phone and say, give me your bank account details. You see? So we don't trust each other. So because these third parties serve as middlemen, to give us the service of trust. They are now rendering service as becoming our trust bodies. Because of that, they charge you. They charge you to render you services of trust. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here. Please, if you don't understand, let me know that you don't understand so I can explain it in a way you would understand. Okay, so banks now are Custodians, yeah, yeah, that's the word. Custodians of trust. You put your entire trust on them to deliver. You put your entire trust on them that they can handle your financial transaction. That is why you save your money in the bank. And that's why instead of you telling your friend, send me your own address, you tell your friend, send me your first bank address. Why? You don't trust your friend, you trust the bank. Now, because we are putting our trust in the bank, right? The bank charges us high. Now, that charge, that high charge can be solved. It is solved with peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So I can send my friend money to his account directly without needing to pay it to his bank account and bank will charge me. So because we now we now transact on the blockchain in a peer-to-peer -peer basis, on a direct basis, transaction fees are reduced. That is why you would see on the blockchain that, um, that's why you see on the blockchain that um, um, someone will send $2 million and he will just spend only less than $1 to pay for transaction fee. Reason is because there is no third party. There is no third party to charge higher transaction fees. For instance, the issue I had with my friend when he was sending money to Western Union, Western Union gave us their own charge. You see, because they were the trusted party to do such transaction. Now it cost us around one thousand three thousand something to send that that one, but the one he sent to me yesterday it cost us less than it cost zero point seventeen dollars. I think zero point seventeen dollars is less than hundred. I think that's about fifteen naira. Yeah, that's how amazing the blockchain is. Please, are you guys ready for the next section? Let's go. So, let's talk about the five important applications of the blockchain. If you're a business person in this place, I want you to start writing down these things because you would need some of these things to incorporate them into your business. Number one, the agricultural sector. I'm taking my time to explain all these things because I want you to have a foundation, a basic foundation of what blockchain is so that you would understand, um, you would understand cryptocurrencies when I enter cryptocurrencies very well. So iPhone is asking, do blockchains make refund after complaining? What kind of refund? In fact, I, I need to make this clear. If you are using um, wallets like, okay, let me leave this one. I will, I will go and spoil some of those businesses. Please let me leave that one. But I don't understand the question. Please ask me questions so I can, I can explain where well. iPhone, I don't know your name. Sorry about that. So as I was explaining, Okay, 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 now I understand. It's asking if blockchain transactions are refundable. They are not. Once you've made a transaction on a blockchain, you cannot cancel. That's what I was explaining. They are immutable, all right? Yeah, they are immutable. So, I said here, blockchain is a solution that to our data. 
and it can be applied in our daily life, in everything that we do. In blockchain, there is no fear of losing data, nor doubt of information. Let's talk about the agricultural se sector. So in the agricultural sector, blockchain can ease the tracking of products using the supply chain system. So Mr. A, Mr. B, and Mr. C are farmers, and why Mr. X has a mall. Mr. X buys an apple from the three farmers and sells them in the, in the mall. Unfortunately, someone came and bought a pack of apple, went home and saw that his maggots, then he told his friends, right? And then Mr. X is going to lose customers. But if Mr. X has a blockchain transaction of where those apples were bought from, he can track it and go back to Mr. A and say, Mr. A, your apples have issues. I think you need me to rectify them. Okay, that is one example of how to use blockchain. So the tracking system, right? The tracking system on the blockchain can help one, product delivery. So I buy a product from Jumia and they tell me it's on the road, right? With the blockchain, we can pinpoint real time where the, trans, where the, the product is on the road without having to spend high transaction fees. If you know how um, the kind of money these people spend when they are trying to track um, these companies that track, these third party companies, remember I told you about middlemen, third party companies that help the companies track their goods and services. If you see how much they charge, ah, you would know that there is real need for blockchain. Before I go to the next um, um, use cases, I, I Tony is saying if you try to swap a coin and the transaction fails, would there be a refund? Okay, um, when you try to swap a coin, they charge you 11% of the amount you wanted to use as transaction fee to swap. This is the reason. Remember I told you that the blockchain is immutable, right? You cannot carry something that is not there and put it there and put in the blockchain. So when you push a transaction, if for any reason that transaction did not go through, meaning that it failed, there has to be a record on the blockchain that see this transaction fails, right? So for that record to go, a particular amount of your transaction fee has to be sprinkled on that block to say, you know, know how that, uh, let me use this example, the biblical example, when Jacob met with God in Bethel, right? They said, carry stone and put here. Let it be like a memorandum that something happened here. You understand? So in that, in that same instance where um, a transaction fails, there is something we call unspent. So it sprinkles some, some funds in that block to show that there was a transaction here, but it failed. Okay, I, ho I hope that answers your question. So guys, let's, let's move, let's move on, let's move on. We have a whole lot of things to cover. In voting, right? In voting, um, the blockchain can be Can you guys hear me? I think I, I lost connection there. Please, if you can hear me, type, I can hear you on the screen. All right, all right, we're good to go. So in voting, one of my friends, uh, Mr. Sondi, he created, he created a blockchain app that allows people to vote. You know, you know, one problem we have in this country is the problem of um, election rigging, whereby one person we vote five million times and they'll count it, right? So imagine a system whereby your details is stored on the blockchain. And because, because you cannot alter or remove something that is already stored on the blockchain. One person cannot come and say he is two people. That's, that's, 
amazing. So if you vote using the blockchain, your vote is your vote. If you try to vote again, it will cancel your vote. It will, it will actually it will cancel the second vote. So, so like we said here, how do we end the violence of marginalization and election rigging? The, the answer is blockchain. And, and, and of course, um, Mr. Stevens um, DAP has been tested. He said it in different places, I think in Unilag, in Uniben, and several other schools during their electoral voting, SUG. And it's, it's, it was amazing. So imagine using blockchain in the election of Nigeria. Only, only eligible voters can vote. The problem they are having right now, trying to use electronic voting system, is because that electronic voting system is not tallied to a particular blockchain. Okay, that's why, and, and, and another good thing about it is that as long as you're a Nigerian, using the blockchain voting system, you can vote anywhere you are. So even if you are in the United States, all you need to do is to log into the app and, and vote. Once it, it has your digital identity, your vote is counted. That's an, another amazing use case of the blockchain. And people have not even known about this. Ah, number three, original content. Please, how many of you know about um, the concept of plagiarism? If you can hear me, type plagiarism. Plagiarism. Um, iPhone is saying so. Please, mean they will not, they will refund you, but they will take eleven percent of your transaction fee for Spring. I, I already explained this. I already explained this now. If you didn't understand, you tell me I don't understand, so I can explain again. My goal here is for you to understand everything I teach here today. Okay, so if you do not understand anything, let me know on the chat box. I'm here. I will explain to you. So, all right, beautiful. You now understand. Beautiful. So, plagiarism is one of the biggest, literally, crime in the world. And blockchain can solve the problem of plagiarism. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you how. Um, oh, nice. Please ask your question again. I didn't, I didn't get the question. Sorry, ask the question again. Before that, let me explain how blockchain has solved the problem of um, plagiarism. All right. So um, there was an uh, there was an um, a website, right? That was experimental. They try to find out how to reward creators for original content and punish violators of plagiarism crime. So the, the, the first experiment that was done was on steamit.com. So on steamit, they have this robot, blockchain robot, that whatever you copy from someone else without citing such person in that article you write, it will be flagged for plagiarism and you'll be punished for it. How amazing, right? Now, this, this is peculiar to the academic industry, right? The academia where we have several people publishing articles and stuff like that. On Steemit, once you write an original content, you are rewarded for it. In fact, they now, they now have a new... Um, they now have a new website, the um, Hive.blog. So on Hive, if you write a, if you if you um, make a good post that is original content, you get a order with Hive token that you can sell and make money with it, right? Why, if you steal a content from someone and post it uh, and post it on Hive, they will flag you for for plagiarism. Right, the boss will flag for granted, and you will punished. You will not make money from that post, and you will lose money. You lose the, the money you already have. You see, so this is a, a, a unique solution to the blockchain by by providing a system whereby people um, people have original contents. You see, that's that's another one. So someone is asking me a question here. If, for example, you mistakenly sent currency to unwilling 
copied wallet. Later on, you realize that you sent the wrong address. Is there a way to get that cryptocurrency back? No, that is what I just explained. It is immutable. Once something is, is sent, it cannot be brought back. The blockchain is immutable. That is the security aspect of it. Once you send a transaction on the blockchain, you cannot bring it back. That is how it is created. All right? That's how it is created, guys. You cannot bring it back. Um, I'm, I'm already recording the, the, the meeting. I'm already recording the meeting. Yeah. For someone that is asking. Okay. I think you understood that. So let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Finally, you are going to talk about them all. The five, number fifth important application of, of blockchain is money transactions, financial transactions, right? Where you have, um, where you send money between one person or the other in a secure, fast, low fee, and efficient method through the use of cryptocurrencies. If you can hear me, please type cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies. I need you to type cryptocurrencies. Beautiful. So now, now I believe, <coughs> sorry about that. I believe you now have a basic understanding of what cryptocurrencies is all about from the blockchain. If you do, please type I do. Beautiful. So now, when, when we're not talking about cryptocurrencies, you will not confuse cryptocurrency with blockchain. Because I really wanted us to have, to have this understanding and this distinction that blockchain is a distributed ledger. Right? Is a distributed ledger system that transactions are stored on blocks, whereby cryptocurrency is the value, is the money that powers the blockchain. So both of them work in pari passu, whereby the blockchain is a transaction, um, is, is a ledger system that stores transactions in form of data, while cryptocurrency is the money that backs up the, uh, the blockchain. All right, someone is saying, please, the pair and pair, I don't understand. Okay, I think I, I really explained it very well, right? I did. I'm going to post this video. You go you go through the video again. If you don't understand it, chat me up on WhatsApp, all right? I'll give you a personal training, all right? Yeah, cool. So, I said here, with this, with the cryptocurrency, you become your own bank. You become your own bank. You receive money any from anyone, anywhere in the world. Now... Um, it is it is um, it is possible for someone to have millions and millions of naira and dollars laying down somewhere without the notice of anybody, banks, government, and the rest of them. This is why the banks are fighting against cryptocurrencies because when in in a world of cryptocurrencies there is no need for the banks because everyone operates in a peer-to-peer -peer basis. There, it, it operates in what we call a trustless economy, an economy where there is no need for trust. And because there is no need for trust in that economy, we don't need people that operate as middlemen, as trust bodies, like the banks. That is why they are fighting again. Because you cannot tell me that in this world, I don't exist, and you want me to accept it. That is not possible. So guys, let's move on. Sorry, sorry, that was number four. Number five is, okay, I call this valuable assets, okay? Um, they, they say it's wheels and exchange. I call it valuable assets. You can store your valuable assets on the blockchain. In fact, in fact, uh, I have a training coming up where, where one, of the, one of the courses inside it is NFTs and DeFi. This NFT, but this NFT uh, issue that we're talking about, how it started, it started as um, when 
people started saving their valuable commodities on the blockchain. So someone will now come and say, okay, um, this is our land, right? I'm going to digitalize this land and store it on the blockchain. So when I say, okay, um, this is my my bank, my bank, um, what's it called now? Bonds, right? They'll store their bank bonds or bonds from all these shares and stuff like that on the blockchain. So as they store it on the blockchain, it's the, the value it had before, they moved it from offline to the blockchain. Now, because they moved it from offline to the blockchain, people were now able to um, buy them off. So you now say, okay, this land is a digitalized land that was bought for $6 million, right? Someone now sell it for $60 million. Someone now sell it for this amount. That was how NFT started. NFTs are, the full meaning of NFT is what we call non-fungible token. All right, I, need, I think you need to write that down so that you will not forget it. NFTs are non-fungible token. So talking about ways and, and change of ownerships, you know that we have this issue we have this issue whereby um, somebody will write a will and then another person will come and say, um, no, 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 land issues, um, um, a parents, inheritance issues and stuff like that. When such is stored on the blockchain and time stamped, everyone can go through it when the, when the, uh, the original owner dies and there will, there will not be any issue because everybody knows that anything that is put on the blockchain cannot be altered. So there is there isn't anything like alteration of will. There is anything like alteration of will. Do you understand that? Please, if you don't understand, please type I don't understand though. You can add the O to stress it. All right. So um, Emmanuel is asking, how do you digitalize? Okay, yeah, digitalizing is, 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 a, is a very different thing altogether. You can do that. Yeah. There are several websites you can do that. There are several um, places you can do that. All right, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, guys, can you hear me? Are you sure? Oh my. Oh, 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 sorry. I thought my network was disconnected. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. So, so that's um, um, uh, about wheels and change of ownership. So let's talk about the revolution of money. Let's talk about money. Because if you don't understand, okay, okay, Iman, I say, so you digitalize a way you create, no, no, no. You don't need to create a smart contract. You don't do lines of codes. The website that allow you to digitalize, digitize um, your, your lands, all they do is to allow you, they verify ownership one, they verify the value as a time of digitalization, and then they grant you a, 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 an NFT or a digitalized asset to prove that you are the owner there. It, it's, a, it's a very simple process. We talked about it in our, in our NFT class, right? Yeah. So I said, yeah, what is money? This money that everybody's talking about, we have 64 people in this group today because we want to find out about money. What is money? Right? What is money? So. Money is more than just a medium of exchange. It's a store of value. And right now, the definition of money has moved. Money has moved from Naira or Kobo or Ghana CD or, or dollar, from what you used to know money as, to anything that can carry value. Do you know that someone can wake up this morning and write a book? Write a book and say, that book is 10,000 Naira. And people will buy it because people believe that that book is valuable. So in a sense, that book becomes a store of value or an asset. That is what money is. Do you understand? Please, if you understood what I just said, type I understand. I understand. All right, beautiful. So now let's go into the history of money. Let me explain something to you. 
So the history of money is in four stages. Stage one, when we had trade by butter system. Remember I told you something that the problem we have in the world is the problem of trust. People do not trust each other. So when they want to exchange value, they introduce, first of all, the trade by butter system, all right? Using what you have to exchange with what you want, right? Now, because the trade by butter system was not efficient, so I'll come and say, I'm exchanging a keg of palm wine with your daughter. The value of the daughter is more than the value of the keg of palm wine. But because it was a trade by butter system, nothing could be done about it. So I'm gonna exchange um, a cow, like one cow with 50 plots of land. So it was inefficient. They needed something else that they could um, show and say, this is value for us. The cowry method was introduced, right? They started using cowries in, in Africa for bread pies, buying of land and stuff like that. People use cowries. Our great grandfather started using cowries, right? Now, stage three, the Chinese started using elements, metals, because they had this seeming weight. So because they, they, they saw it had weight, they said, ah, this thing has weight. That means it is valuable. We call the, 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 the started using such metals as money. So you have a pile of iron now. And you say, use this pile of iron and give me 50 bags of apple. They use it as money. But the challenge then was that there was no method of measurement. There was no means of measurement. There was no way you could say, this is what this, or this is the value of this. There was no value ascribed to it. So what did they do? They now melted, they now started what we call coinarium. They melted all those um, ions, metals, sulfur into different, um, into different, uh, um, what's it called now? Sizes and they, I need to remove somebody. Bye-bye. Thank you. So they, 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 let me, let me clear this annotation. Sorry guys. All right. So they melted those um, um, ions, metals and stuff, and then they printed on them and say, okay, this is five yuan because it is weighing five pounds. That was actually how the British pounds came around. They weighed it because of the weight, right? They ascribed value to it. So value, money, money was ascribed value because of how weighty it was. They said, this is 10 pounds. This is 15 pounds. Why? Because it was weighing 15 pounds, right? Now, this is what happened. Because those coins and gold and stuff, they were very heavy to carry. People started taking them because, of course, you have to go and melt them and print on them, right? People started taking them to goldsmiths and blacksmiths, right? These goldsmiths and blacksmiths, they will take it to them, and then they will give you a receipt to show that you have five pounds of gold in my shop. Let me, uh, for a goldsmith, for instance, you say this is received to show that this person has five pounds of gold in my shop. So I'll go and give 100 pounds of bronze. You say this person has 100 pounds of bronze in my shop. Now, this is what happened. Because you have the receipts, but people started doing transactions with receipts. So I go now to buy, um, um, let me say, I go to buy book. I say, how much is this book? He says it's five pounds. I say, I have a receipt of five pounds of gold from charities, um, um, blacksmiths. Take this receipt. Whenever you go to his, his blacksmith to, um, whenever you go to his blacksmith, tell him I gave it to you. He will give you five bags of five pounds of gold for this book I am collecting. You see, that was the ideology. People, people needed easy life. So because it was easier transacting the receipts than the metals and precious metals, people now started fully transacting only receipts. And they forgot about the goods. 
it now became an issue of um, global, um, it became a global issue. So there was this um, um, meeting by world leaders. Then I said, okay, what do we do? At that meeting at, uh, I forgot the name of the place, um, it, was, it, was, it was agreed that the dollar will now be used as a means of calculating value for money. So you now say, okay, one pound, one dollar is 1.34 pounds. You see, that's how they started calculating it. All right. Now, what now happened was that as that same thing happened, remember, we started from trade by battle, we moved to coronary, we moved to calories, coronary, and the rest of them. See what happened. When, when people started transacting the dollar, the dollar was supposed to be an equivalent of one bar of gold. In fact, if you can still find the early dollars that was printed, that early dollar used to be a receipt. Yeah, a receipt of one bar of gold that was stored in the United States Treasury. Please, if you have understood me to this point, please type, I understand. If you have understood me to this point, I just explain now. Type, I understand. Because the next point I am going to explain, if you don't understand to this point, you will miss it. If you don't understand though, say, I don't understand though, put the O so that I will get you very clearly. All right, let me continue. So people now stay using the dollar. We now had the Naira, we now had the Quacha, the Excudo, the different um, rupees, right? We now have different paper money, right? Paper money was meant to be a representation of the amount of um, value of assets of a particular country has in their treasury. I'm going to explain peer to peer later iPhone for iPhone, right? I think he's having an issue. I think he has to be practical for you, right? I'll send you some coins so you see how peer to peer works. Let me continue my explanation here. So people started. What, what happened was that the dollar, every country's currency was meant to be a reflection of how rich that country is in terms of mineral and natural resources. That is what we call the GDP of a country. But look at what now happened. Countries started printing money without having assets backing them. So you'd see the United States Treasury will tell you they are printing $300 million for stimulus, right? This country will say they are printing this. They now forgot about the money the value that was supposed to be attached to paper money. Guess what? Paper money is now as valueless as paper. Paper money is now as valueless as paper. Reasons being that the more money is printed, the more inflation comes because the currencies are diluted. The more values they are supposed to have, they no longer have them because they are no longer backed by assets. That is why storing money in paper money is like carrying all the things you call valuable and putting it inside a tree. In fact, I have a practical example. I'm gonna explain it maybe later in this, tra in this training. Ah, it's already one hour. Hey, wow, wow, wow. I think, I think we have to, going to stop here. I still have a good, man, I still have 20 something pages. Wow, wow. Okay, guys, this is what we're going to do right now. So let me let me finish this. Let me finish up from here. Now, we are using paper money now, right? The next stage, which is stage five, which is the stage that people in the cryptocurrency space are already in at the moment, is the stage of digital currencies. The stage of digital currencies, whereby you no longer need to have... Um, paper money or gold or anything for you to be able to transact. You can transact from the comfort of your home. Now, now, before cryptocurrencies came to stay, before cryptocurrencies came to stay, right, we had other forms of digital money. We had PayPal. How many of you know PayPal? If you know PayPal, please type PayPal. 
there was PayPal, there was Payoneer, there is um, Flutterwave, right? There is Paystar, there is Stripe, and there are a whole lot of them. All these are means of making life easier. In fact, listen, the whole, the whole idea of cryptocurrency is to make your life easier. In fact, the whole life of anything that is innovative in this world, in this life, is to make life easier. Remember when, when in the olden days people used to trek from, from Lagos to Abuja on foot, right? Now they invented bicycles, it was easier. They invented bikes, motorbikes, cars. Now they have aeroplanes. If for five minutes you can move from Potakot to um, Abuja, right? So the entire idea of cryptocurrency is to make <coughs> your life easy. So now we have cryptocurrencies, which is the next phase. Cryptocurrency is a heightened phase of the digital money space. Whereby, do you know that? Do you know that? Eh? Ah, the money in your bank is not actually there. The transactions you do with your ATM and stuff like that, when you transfer money to somebody, it's just numbers. It's just you're the, like you're doing cryptocurrencies, right? The only difference is that in cryptocurrency, it, the money is there because it is encrypted. Nobody has access to it. You need a public key and a private key. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'm going to end this training. We're going to continue again tomorrow. We're going to continue tomorrow. I've already spent more time. I spent the foundation. Now, I, I, I am glad you have understood this foundation. I hope I've been able to convince you to understand the foundations of blockchain tomorrow. We're going to talk about the five methods of making millions in cryptocurrency in 2021. I'm going to show you five ways. Five ways you are going to find um, the time. The time is the same time we started here today, 5 p.m. Tomorrow is Sunday, so we'll do 5 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to take five questions before I go. It's already 6.07, so I'm going to end by 6.10. We're going to take five questions. Five questions. So if you have a question... Please ask me a question on this chat box. Number one question says, please throw more light on the public and private. Don't worry. Tomorrow I'll do a practical training. I'll, I'll do a live training. All right. I'll show you practically. We will we'll have a practical training. I'll send money to somebody here. If I will create a wallet. Yeah. We'll create a wallet tomorrow. No, you don't need to download anything tomorrow. Before tomorrow. We'll create a wallet and do everything. I'll show you here and here. It has to be a, a very, very practical training. Okay. So guys, um, next question, say thank you boss. Ah, thank you. I, wait, I hope you've learned something in this training. Please, I need you to tell me one thing you learned in this training. One thing, type it on the chat box. One thing you learned in this training before we go. You'd be so sad, use me as an example. <laughs> on WhatsApp, are we creating the wallet? Oh, I say, yes, I got value. WhatsApp, WhatsApp, you trust wallet, yeah. I learned everything, no. What is everything you learned? No, no, we nice do like that in my class. So you have to tell me exactly what you understood. Good. Ferdinand said, I now understand what blockchain is about. Um, someone said, uh, if I said, learn that blockchain is here. Oh my God. Ah, the messages are, are pouring like water. I can't read all your messages, guys. Uh, let me just try and scroll through, right? I now understand what blockchain is about. I learned that cryptocurrency is here to stay. I learned that blockchain is secured and can be used to keep records. I learned the application of blockchain. I learned about blockchain. I was I used to think blockchain was all about cryptocurrencies, but now I understand better. I learned that failed transactions doing swapping isn't lost just yet. Wow. I learned that money is value, not paper. I learned, yes, I got value. I learned cryptocurrencies are just part of the entire blockchain idea. I learned different things. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Someone said, I learned how safe cryptocurrency is. Um, Chief Uber said, I learned the difference between fiat currency and cryptocurrency. Ah, messages is still. Evita said, I learned that money in the bank doesn't have a... Please, if you have a question, please ask a question. No. I learned that cryptocurrency will stop the era of rigging and violence in election. CJ said, peer-to-peer -peer was explained before. Um, Adele Gun, is it, I was explained, uh, but I was confused about it before. Okay. Adele Gun Felix said, I learned different in blockchain. 
um, Staffy's design said, I learned that blockchain is here to make our life easier for us. Money can be, can be what we keep value with. Wow, wow. Adam said, what blockchain is all about? I learned about history of money. Would there be more advanced class after this? Um, we're having a class tomorrow. It's still free. It's, free. it's a free class. Please share the five page of evolution. No, I'm going to share that tomorrow. I'm going to share that tomorrow. We're going to end here. Okay, guys. Um, wow, 60 people. Oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Wow, wow. I, I am so, 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 so honored. I'm going to tell you guys this. I am so honored to have each and every one of you here today. It is an honor. It is an honor to have you guys here. I can't take it for granted. You guys are the best. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for, for being here today. Thank you so much for coming around. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow, tomorrow by 5 p.m. I want to talk about, in fact, oh God, what I'm going to teach you guys tomorrow, but if you pay, if you pay 50K for it, it's nothing. I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to tear the blockchain open for you. You are going to, you must learn. No? In my classes, you must learn. Ask anybody that have seen my classes. You have to learn. Don't miss out tomorrow. Clear your schedule. Clear your schedule. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, see, we all win. We are all a work in progress. See you guys tomorrow. This is Chi Jams signing out. Do have a great day ahead and bye bye.